<laughs> We're good. This next segment is something that is really important to me. It's all about staying safe in Orange County. And I'm so delighted to introduce um, Under Sheriff Don Barnes with the Orange County Sheriff's Department. Don, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Amy and Lauren, for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Well, we appreciate it too. So obviously, you know, we're members of Orange County the community. We want to stay safe. And we're here in Laguna Woods, where we're particularly interested in keeping seniors safe. So what is this new initiative that you have? We have an initiative that we've started. It's called Stay Safe OC, mm -hmm. and it's kind of a wraparound of public safety services, helping them educate our communities to be co-producers of their own safety, stop mm -hmm. setting themselves up to be victims whenever possible, and mm -hmm. do things that will help uh, keep crime rates low, make our job easier on us mm -hmm. by helping people not become victims of crime. Well, I really appreciate that too because sometimes you feel like, you know, you're just in the community and you're like, I don't even know what I can do to help my neighbor. Or you hear about things happening and you're like, you know, like somebody's car got broken into one of my neighbors, you know, the other day and I thought, I, I don't know what I could do to help protect or prevent that. So do you have some tips of things that we could do? Sure. You know, the, there's some simple things that people can do to prevent from not being victims of crime, mm -hmm. especially property crime. Mm -hmm. Simple things like making sure your car doors are locked when your car's not in the garage. Mm -hmm. Your car is much less likely, or you're less likely to be a victim if you park your car in a locked garage. Mm -hmm. Twice as likely to be burglarized if it's parked in the driveway, and four times as likely to be burglarized parked away from home. Mm -hmm. So keeping it close to home is key. Mm -hmm. Making sure you keep your, door, your car doors locked at night because, or anytime really. Mm -hmm. People, it's called car fishing. Mm -hmm. People will go through at night looking for unlocked doors mm -hmm. and they'll just go through and steal anything of value. Mm -hmm. More importantly, not leaving things, items of value in plain sight within the car also is a great deterrent. Mm -hmm. It invites people to break into cars when you see a laptop or a purse, even sunglasses or loose change mm -hmm. might invite people into a car. Mm -hmm. Keeping your garage door closed mm -hmm. when you're not in the garage as well mm -hmm. and although this is a retirement community it probably doesn't happen as often but just making sure you look out for your neighbors people mm -hmm. checking ringing doorbells to see if anybody's home and then forcing entry into the house mm. is another great deterrent great neighborhood watch programs are also a great deterrent to keep property crime low so you said like five things that i'm not doing right already <laughs> <laughs> so I can, i'm gonna start there okay. but i think most people like you know, I think it's really easy to get lazy, right? And say, oh, I don't need to lock my car this time. Or, or sometimes you, know, you just forget. You know, your right. hands are full mm -hmm. and you're not reaching for the key. I mean, it's so many reasons. Mm -hmm. So many reasons, but that's a great reminder. And the statistics were so interesting there too. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that much higher. Well, sometimes we invite people into our community by keeping our guard down, we get comfortable. Right. Mm -hmm. And the way burglary crews work is they come through, they swoop through, they hit a bunch of homes or cars at one time and then they go away and they're, they're really counting on people to get comfortable or complacent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in their own safety and then people start to forget to lock things up and become aware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, I come from New sense. York City, so I have You're a, always aware. I, You're I, always I have, aware. I have a totally different level of awareness, it's true, that and I notice it on, with my neighbors mm -hmm. because they will walk out and just leave the door open Mm -hmm. Like not even unlocked, but just open. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, I got to watch that now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. And I live in a master plan community where there's like a park three doors down and the kids run back and forth in each, you know, their mm -hmm. neighbor's houses. And there is that, like you were saying earlier, this false narrative that it's safe and it's because yeah. it's what we want. It we feels want safe. it to be safe and yeah. we want to give our kids the childhood that we had probably. Well, and to even make that more complicated for us, we live in one of the safest communities in the United States. Mm -hmm. South Orange County, as a region, has some of the lowest crime rates nationally, and that adds to that false perception mm -hmm. of safety mm -hmm. that we have to be aware of. There's, but crime still does occur here, and mm -hmm. we have to do everything we can to prevent that from happening in the mm -hmm. first place. It's much easier to prevent crime than it is to respond and investigate it once it's already happened. What are some of the, do you know of any statistics off the top of your head about some of the crime rates that we have? Well, the, the any area across the United States. The mm -hmm. two largest categories of crime we deal with are property crime and drug crime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those two really are, have a correlation between drug crime being driven by mm -hmm. thefts that oftentimes used to sell product to buy and then buy drugs. Buy the drugs. Mm -hmm. So Prop 47 mm -hmm. passed in 2014 mm -hmm. is probably one of the greatest contributors to that. The recategorization of those two crimes, property crime and drug crimes, 
from felonies to misdemeanors. Mm. Yeah, and now, when it, before Prop 47, if you had heroin, you would arrest somebody and take them to jail. Now when they have heroin, you write them a ticket and they go to the curb and hopefully learn their way, but we know that doesn't happen. So it's oh. really adding to the addiction challenges that we're mm -hmm. facing as a country, actually as a state, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of really challenging things for law enforcement that we're facing. Mm -hmm. uh, drugs, property, homelessness, all those things kind of are mm -hmm. have a correlation. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my good friend's husbands is a um, police officer, and he was actually just promoted to detective, and and it's really interesting to get that perspective. And I, there's huge appreciation for what you guys do to help keep us safe. You know, it's kind of like because you're keeping us so safe, I think we don't appreciate all the stuff that goes on right. behind the scenes. I think know? the joke is, what do the Orange County Police actually do? There's nothing for them to <laughs> we do. We do a really good job. But it's because you're doing you such do a good a job, job taking there, care of it behind the scenes. The crime has been ticking up, and uh, we're starting to see some mm -hmm. of these things happening. That's a result mm -hmm. of some of the early release programs and propositions. Mm -hmm and some voter-based initiatives that have been mm -hmm. passed over the last several years. Mm -hmm. But we are seeing crime tick back up. So what can we do to help the Orange County Sheriff's Department keep crime away? Well, from and, and, and the scams that are going on right now. Oh, that's, that's, that's another that's thing. That's a huge the cyber part of it. Crime. We haven't even gotten mm -hmm. to the cyber crime mm -hmm. or the, it's telephonic, it's, it's cyber crime. People are innovative and criminals are innovative too and they're looking mm -hmm. for different ways to target people and, and uh, take advantage of them. You mentioned cyber crimes. The Sheriff's mm -hmm. Department is the only law enforcement agency in Orange County outside the FBI that has a cyber crimes unit. Really? We're oftentimes investigating those types of crimes and having good results. We just had a prosecution recently. Somebody in Great Britain, believe it or not, prosecuted from a cyber crime that they committed here in Orange County. Mm, that's but really interesting. Going back to the premise of helping us keep ourselves safe, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of scams that are happening and, and unfortunately target many times the elderly community mm -hmm. and uh, that's what our community is made up here primarily in Laguna Woods Village. So there are several things that your residents, your community can do to help keep themselves safe. Primarily, don't share information. Mm -hmm. If they limit the, the amount of information about themselves on either Facebook or websites, uh, that will really uh, help protect them. Mm -hmm. If they do social media, if they have a Facebook account, keep it private so that only your friends can see that information and mm. the public cannot go through there and get information off that website or off of your Facebook. And the reason that makes a difference if, after we go through some of these scams, a lot of the scammers are looking for personal identifiable information on victims, mm. finding out information about them, who their relatives may be, who their grandson. To or build trust or how? Well, to build trust and then also to use it to their advantage when they reach out to try to scam people. Mm. Right. So, so one of the greatest scams that's happening right now is we call it the IRS scam. Mm. And this is where the phone call will come through. It's usually to somebody targeted and they threaten them that they, they will state, we are the IRS you have a lien, a tax lien, or you haven't paid your taxes, and we need you to pay your taxes. I got that one. I totally got that one. Well, I've gotten it several times, of course. Oh, I just yeah. hang out because you know that's not how the IRS works. But I didn't works. know. Like, I feel like I'm a fairly savvy, like, you know, I'm in marketing, that's my job. And I'm like, I called my husband, I'm like, I think the IRS is coming after us. And he's like, Amy, this is a total scam. <laughs> It's very, they're very convincing. And they they know are. How to get people, and they especially know when they get somebody on the hook on the other end of the line. That's right. And what they try to do is convince them that there'll be a property lien, or even the sheriff's department will come out and arrest you if you don't pay your taxes, mm -hmm. and you have to do it right now and immediately. And then right. they, they get the person bought in, mm -hmm. and they'll say the way you do that is you go down and you buy gift cards or transference of some money. And mm -hmm. of course the IRS doesn't take gift cards, but... Uh, <laughs> nice to think they might. <laughs> well, it, it's quite a stretch. But believe it or not, people, they're very convincing and people do buy into that. Mm -hmm. They'll buy thousands of dollars in gift cards and send them to a location never to be seen again. Wow. And they that's actually how they, do it. They, it works. It, they, you would not be getting these phone calls if it if wasn't it did, working. If it didn't work oh so gosh. well. What are some of the others? So one, we call it the, 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 gran, the granny scam mm -hmm. where people, and this is where Facebook really plays mm -hmm. in. If you post pictures of your grandchildren and, and you have names, and they'll oftentimes call and say, Grandma, I'm in jail, this is Don. Mm -hmm. And they find that information out on social media, and they're very convincing on there. They'll say, I'm in jail, I need you to post bail mm -hmm. because I'm wherever I am. And, uh, and they'll do the same thing, go get either cash mm -hmm. and send it here, mm -hmm. or get um, <clears throat> gift cards again and send them to me. And those things are another way to get people bought in. Wow. The easiest way to, to resolve that issue is if there is that scam, grandma, I'm in jail, hang up, 
and call the person who is supposedly calling you. Right. Call your grandchild mm -hmm. or your daughter or son and ask about it and make sure that you can confirm in a different way mm -hmm. that it's not those people who mm -hmm. are calling or reaching out to you. Mm -hmm. And by the way, bail agents don't work that way. That's not the way that system operates. Mm -hmm. right. So knowing that that happens, mm -hmm. and it happens frequently, and that's one that specifically targets the elderly community because it's easy to con them with mm -hmm. that. Sometimes they'll just say, Grandma, I'm in jail. And then Grandma will say, Don, is that you? Yes, it's me, Don. And you're, they're getting information from them. Wow, that is that is so pretty innovative. To be very, very cautious about mm -hmm. how that works is, is paramount in keeping our community safe. Well, you see on TV where you're like, I only get one phone call, and then like they hang up, and then, you know what I mean? I know, like, you're I'm afraid. Yeah. It, you, if you don't know how it works, it's it would be so easy. It's kind of heartbreaking, because I always, I always go to this place that says, if they would only use their powers for good, <laughs> like the people I who are creators, they're, they're so brilliant at this. Mm -hmm. What if they actually were doing something good yeah, with like that turn genius? it around. Well, I know. That would be too easy, but I they know. prey upon, uh, they prey upon the community. Yeah. And oh, it happens yeah. quite frequently, actually. How yeah. can our viewers get more information from the Sheriff's Department? Well, we have information this? available on our website. And there's a lot of other mm -hmm. ways that people get scammed, but primarily don't make information available. There's some things that these criminals will do. They'll reach out, and they use the bank scams also. They'll call until your account is frozen. Can you right. confirm your mm -hmm. account information with me? Can you confirm your... That's not the way any financial institution does not yeah, operate I've that way. I've had that conversation with my parents on multiple occasions. Yeah, that's so right. never offer out or confirm information over the phone with anybody. If mm -hmm. somebody calls and says they're Wells Fargo, we need to confirm your bank and your password, hang up and call Wells Fargo and see if that's a legitimate phone call. And mm -hmm. you'll find most often it is that not. That is not interesting. Yeah, so we so what to, is the website that yeah. we need to go to? So you can go to OCSD.org. There's a lot of crime prevention tips on there. I mentioned that we have our new initiative called Stay mm -hmm. Safe OC. Mm -hmm. And these are some examples of the handouts that mm -hmm. members of your community may see. This is a door hanger and uh, it may end up on a door within your community. It's mm -hmm. reminding people. And sometimes it's posted because there is a crime spree or a crime mm -hmm. wave happening within an area mm -hmm. to help remind people to to be co-producers of their own safety and lock things up. Mm -hmm. But we have other initiatives as well, and a lot of this material will be made available throughout our contract cities. It's okay. also branded in a way that every police department can use it. So we're mm -hmm. looking at a countywide initiative to help keep mm -hmm. our community safe. Together, we can help keep crime low and help people from becoming victims. Well, so, thank you so much. OCSD.org. OCSD.org. Perfect. Yes. And thank you again. Thank you for helping us stay safe. Thanks for all of the service that you know everyone does in the department. And we appreciate it. Really and appreciate we it. We appreciate you coming and in. We appreciate our yes. partners. And Laguna thank Woods you. is one of our contract partners, longstanding. And we're looking forward to working with you for many years. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we will be right back.